All right, you guys, day number seven, the final step, putting it all together. You ready? Let's go. All right, you guys, happy Wednesday. This is today. I'm going to share you with you guys day number seven, the final step, putting everything together from step one to step number six. And if you have not done those steps, don't worry about this one. Otherwise, you're going to get all confused. All right, you guys. But uh, before I get into that, I want to say I am sorry and apologize to those of you who prepay for my wife lawn super marketing blueprint. Um, it was supposed to be done and complete today and, and uh, to be uh, delivered to you guys to, uh, today or the next day. Um, but I apologize on that because the wife and I, you know, we wanted to add more more into the package. So that's why it's gonna take us a little bit more time. Hopefully we'll be able to get it done this weekend and have it ready for you guys like early next week, Monday or Tuesday. But the promotion is gonna be ended and over today. So if you guys don't wanna prepay no more, just wait until it's complete because you guys won't get that promotion discount of 100 bucks off, all right? So uh, what it is is she's going to do an interview with the VA when she hired on. So she's going to actually record that interview and share with you guys what questions she asked and things like that. How, like what, how to interview your VA so that you know that they're good for your business or good for your um, or good as employed to hire. Uh, and then I'm going to and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a video where I'm going to pull back the curtain. And share with you guys our kind of our complete system when we send out the marketing piece when the call comes in where does it go um, you know what 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 program and company do we use for all of these and also too is you know when the you know how our VA pick up the calls how do we do meeting with the VA I'm gonna share all of that with you guys all right like I said, I'd rather under promise and over deliver instead of the other way around. But um, but we're gonna add all of that in. I'm gonna do a veto to share with you guys uh, uh, with you guys all of that. All right, you guys above and beyond. So um, so anything else that we can think of between now and then uh, to add into this package, we are gonna put it all in there for you guys. All right, just not just the marketing, just not just the marketing showing you pull the sellers, the all the all the list, the buyer list, um, and company and all of that, but more into our business. All right, you guys. So, anyways, you guys, um, if you have want to buy it, the link is in the descriptions. Go to wholesale to million no s wholesale to million dot com. So anyways, you guys, let's get into it. Day number seven, the final step. So basically step number one, you guys already made a commitment, all right? You guys already made a year commitment to into this business. After a year, you cannot close your first wholesale deal. There is a problem where I feel like you, you probably need to get a mentor. So that way they can dissect what is going on, why are you not getting the result? Because if you follow these steps, if you take massive action, there is really no, there is really no reason why you couldn't close, um, you know, your first wholesale deal. Um, so, um, so the first one, you guys have made a commitment. You know that this path is not going to be easy. You know this journey is not going to be easy. You know that there's going to uh, be things and and stuff that are going to come up and try to hold you back. And uh, and like I said, you know, success is like a marriage. It takes commitment. All right, to make it work. Um, so now you have uh, the market that you want to dominate and crush. You have your marketing set up already to send out. You have all your contract, the assignment contract, the double closing contract. You have a title company or the attorney. Everything all ready to go. Now, once you lock up that property up on the contract, what you want, you know, once the seller and you have signed that contract, the purchase and sell contract. What you want to do is now you're going to take that and send that into your title company or your attorney and, and get escrow open. So basically what it is, is you're going to open up escrow, all right? And you need to drop off the earnest money, whatever the amount is that is in the contract between you and the seller. You want to drop that off. You don't give it to the seller. You drop that money off into the title company or the attorney and what that earnest money do is now it's it makes the contract becomes legit all right so if there's no funds involved the contract is not it's not legit so once there's money has been deposited that's when the contract becomes legit like becomes real okay 
Now, the, the, now, once you have that sign, you send it to your title company, you set up a showing already, you, let's just say you found a buyer, you set up a showing, uh, have the uh, buyer walk through the property, and the buyer is ready to go, all right? And the buyer's ready to go to move forward to buy this property. Now, what you wanna do is that you now have to send your buyer the assignment contract. So basically, all you, what you're doing is you are assigning your rights to buy this property over to this new buyer. So this new buyer is taking taking your positions to move forward to close on this property. And what it is, is whatever your assignment fee is, right? If it's small, then you want to do an assignment. If it's large, then you want to do what's called a double closing. So when you assign the contract from, uh, you, if you, when you assign the contract, then the buyer will know how much you make. But if you guys have my contract and my addendum, um, I share with you guys how you are still able to do that without the buyer knowing how much you make, okay? But for those of you who don't have my contract, um, basically when you assign it, the buyer will know how much you make on it. So it really depends on your buyer and the relationship. And, um, you know, um, so a lot of buyers will get upset if you make, you know, 20, 30, 40,000. It depends on the area. It depends on some buyer. Some area... A typical assignment fee could be, you know, twenty thousand, thirty, or forty, or fifty thousand dollar. An average assignment fee, nobody cares, right? Buyers don't care about it, right? And uh, some area, you know, maybe the assignment, the normal assignment fee is like ten thousand, fifteen thousand, or five thousand, and then you're making twenty thousand on the deal. Your buyer now gets upset, and that's the time where you now have to decide if you are going to sign. Or you're gonna do a double closing when you do a double closing the buyer does not know how much you make because basically what it is is that the purchase sale between you and the seller is that you're gonna buy for X amount okay and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna send your buyer a purchase and sell contract so they are gonna buy from you okay so all they know is they're buying it from you for this amount for X amount okay they do not know how much you're buying it from the seller for okay now the thing to keep in mind is typically on this you know when people do a double closing because they don't they want to hide the assignment agree the assignment amount right the amount of money that they're making from the buyer because they don't want to upset the buyer you know you don't want you know they don't want to upset the buyers they don't want to, you know, basically challenge their intelligence saying, oh, yeah, I make more than you. Even if I'm just assigning it, you're going to do all the work and flip and fix and flip. Some buyer has a pro some buyer do have problem with that. OK, but that's going to be up to you to determine uh, what you want to do. But you got to take in consideration that you are going to have to pay closing costs. And typically in my area, it's about three percent of the purchase price. So if it's one hundred thousand dollars. And if you agree to the seller that you're paying for all the seller closing costs, you have to take into consideration that you're going to be out of pocket at 103. So 3% is $3,000, right? Plus or minus. So you got to figure that out, how much the closing cost is, a percentage. And to find out, so you just ask your title company or your attorney to give you a rough, um, I better turn on the air conditioner, to give you a rough estimate of what, of what the closing cost fee would be, okay? And then what you want to do is when you sell, the, uh, when you go and do a double closing, where you sell to your buyer, and if you tell your buyer, hey, you paying all the seller closing costs, so which means you don't have to worry about uh, paying the closing costs when you resell it to your buyer. They're going to pay for all of that. You just need to worry about the closing costs between you and the seller and make sure your assignment fee in there is enough to take care of that okay so if your assignment fee was only two thousand and the um and the and the whole closing cost come the whole closing cost and sale come out to 103 then obviously there's no room in there okay so you want to make sure you take that into consideration that you're going to be paying for all the closing costs on the seller side you do a double closing um uh and the next thing is you want to make sure that um you want to make sure that the buyer drop off a non-refundable deposit so when you are signing it or do a double closing let's just say that you agree with the seller that you're going to get put up 500 dollars earnest money with them okay now when you go and you find that buyers and that buyers ready to go you want to make sure that buyer drop off more than what you have drop off what 
more than what you have deposit with the seller okay so if it's a five hundred dollars you want so if it's five hundred dollars so if the earnest money between you and the seller is five hundred dollars you want to make sure that your buyer drop off more the non-refundable to cover that five hundred dollars okay typically i ask the buyer how much they can put down and typically i like to you know our average assignment fee is like you know twenty to twenty five to thirty thousand dollars so typically i like to get the buyer to put down at least ten to fifteen thousand but like i said that's really depend on your your um uh, your assignment, uh, your your assignment fee uh, amount. So, but you want to make sure that is enough. Uh, that is more than what you have to cover for the seller in case the deal goes wrong. In case for some reason the buyer backs out and does not want to move forward to close on it. So what it is is the buyer is going to lose their non-refundable the non-refundable deposit to you. So let's just say that uh, you got the buyer to drop off a thousand bucks. The buyer's now going to lose that. 1000 uh 1000 non refundable to you and now you take that five, that 1000 give the seller the 500 bucks uh bec you know in compensate right to compensate that you take up the time um and the deal didn't work out so the seller now gets to keep their 500 bucks earnest money you at least get to keep 500 bucks for the time spent with the buyer all right and another thing is that you got to understand you guys is when you when 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 so basically when you do this kind of deal you just got to make sure that you coordinate with the seller the buyer and the title company all right to get this move forward to closing smoothly so typically when you drop off your assignment agreement your purchase and sell agreement to your title company or to the attorney and what it is is if they have any questions they're going to contact you and your job is to communicate between the seller the buyer and that title company to coordinate whatever question or answer or anything that needs to be answered okay so uh so that's your job so uh and now the th so you guys that's pretty much the whole that's pretty much you know that's pretty much the whole thing you, you get the contract, you send it to your title company, you get the buyer's uh, assignment agreement or double closing, send it to your title company, and they will do everything for you. Um, I, I, and one thing is I want to tell you guys this is, you know, <clears throat> I want you guys to do step by step and not jump around is because, you know, I want to prepare yourself. I want you you guys to prepare yourself and have all the tools ready right so that way when you don't you know that way when you have a contract you don't run around like you're you know like you know you don't run around like crazy because you're like okay now what should i do i gotta go find a title company attorney oh my gosh what's good you know what i should do next if you follow the step by step you should be able to you right move this smoothly to closing okay and that's why i don't and also too is another thing is i want to share with you guys is when i first started out i was spending 500 bucks to a thousand bucks per month sending out my marketing and it took me six months to get my first deal and it wasn't even directly with the seller because i couldn't not know how to talk and communicate with the seller so i was losing 500 to a thousand bucks every single month right because and i did that for like six months and that's why i i want you guys to do step by step you know because i don't want you guys to start sending out your marketing and not know and don't know how to communicate or talk to the seller properly right to lock these deal up on the contract all you're going to do is you're just going to waste your mar marketing money and you guys especially in today's market the competition is heated right competition is in every single market and if you do not know how to communicate and talk to the seller properly right giving them sharing with them what kind of benefit you're right what kind of benefit for them right what is the benefit for them to go with your company right what kind of uh what what kind of benefit your company provide for them and if you do not know how to explain and communicate with them properly and negotiate with them properly why they should come down on price why did why should they go with you instead of listing the property doing it for sale by owner or go with another company then you are going to lose to your competitor all right you guys you got to understand today's market it's hot everybody's want to jump into real estate you know so 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 you got to make sure your skill set on communicating and talking to seller it's just got to be sharp it's just got to be good especially if you are going to do this virtually and locking deal up on the contract over the phone you need to 
practice and get good at your communication skill with the seller. Know how to handle all of their objection, objections, to give them the trust, to give them the peace of mind, to give them the, to give them to go ahead and give you the commitment. All right, you guys, and that's why I'm doing the step by step, and you guys don't jump around. Uh, and make sure you follow the step by step. So, so if you haven't done step one, two, three, four, five, don't jump on to six, uh, step six and seven. I did, I do them in order for a reason. All right, I want you guys to have all the tools ready before you send out your marketing and uh, and things like that because I don't want you guys to lose out on to waste your money like I did. All right, you guys. But anyways, you guys, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the whole entire puzzle. And if you, you know, within the next 12 months or so, with the commitment that you you, you make, with the massive action that you are taking, and if you can't close a deal, then you need to get a mentor. All right, because your mentor needs to come in, dissect, and see what is wrong and why you couldn't get your first wholesale deal done within that 12 months, all right, you guys? But if you follow step by step, take massive action, there is really no reason why you couldn't do one wholesale deal within the next 12 months, all right? All right, you guys, I totally forgot to add this in there, is setting up showing with buyers and sellers. So let's just say once you found a buyer, uh, or a potential buyer for the property and they want to do the walkthrough, you just go ahead and let the seller know that, hey, one of our contractors, we're going to send out uh, our contractor or our partners to do the walkthrough on the property to inspect it um, just to make sure that there's no major issue and just to gather all the information on the repair cost that is needed to be done to the property. And on the buyer side, you just prep the buyer up, whether the property is rented or it's vacant or the seller is living there, you just prep the buyer up and let the buyer know that hey you know what you are there on behalf of our contractor as a partner as a company to just walk through the property inspect the property and looking at repair costs please don't discuss pricing with the seller and typically what you want to do is you want to set up uh, you know somebody foot on the ground that is on your team on your behalf to make sure that buyer and seller doesn't discuss pricing but you want to set the uh, the buyer up and let them know that hey you know you can ask the seller anything but don't discuss Discuss about pricing all right that's between us and the seller and then on the seller side you already told the the seller already hey this is just one of our contractor that's gonna come out there to uh, uh, to look at the property on the repair so they wouldn't talk about pricing with that contractor all right and if you have to set up multiple showing so let's just say a couple uh, the first couple showing you couldn't get the property sold and you need to set up more showing with the seller you just need to tell the seller that hey you know what the contractor that we sent in before their rehab cost is just so high uh, that we couldn't make the number works but we have been talking to some other contractor that might be able to do the repair cost for less for where we need it to be Okay, and that's how you set up multiple showing with the seller without the seller saying, hey, what's going on here, right? Why are you sending multiple? And tell the seller that we just need to get multiple bid on the rehab uh, just to make the number work. All right, you guys? So that's how you do it. But anyways, you guys, um, you know, I wish you guys all the best. And I wish to have you guys onto my channel to share with everybody your first wholesale deal and your stories to motivate and inspire other and let them know that everybody can do this if you put your mind to it. All right? So I wish you guys all the best. I wish you guys tons of success and I look forward to getting each and every single one of you onto the show. Take care you guys. And if you are new to the channel and you haven't subscribed and you're interested in learning about wholesaling houses, especially virtually, boom, smash the subscribe button. If this video add any value to you, smash that thumbs up for me. And also to you guys, if you want to follow me or the wife on Instagram, the link is in the descriptions. Go to at Kong.wtm. Thank you, you guys. Take care. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.